Hello viewers, you are welcome to this video. This video is for all university students in the world. We want to look at the bisection method for solving nonlinear equations. The bisection method for solving nonlinear equations. Now, to understand the method, let's look at the question. In the course of solving the question, all the, the concepts you need to understand the, the method will be explained to you. The question is two questions. Let me see question one. Use the bisection method to obtain the root of the equation Section method to obtain the roots of the equation x plus 4 x squared minus 10 equal to 0 in the interval 1 x is greater than equal to 1 but less than equal to 2. Correct to 1 decimal place. Now let's look at the question. The equation is nonlinear. It is nonlinear because the power, the highest power of x is 3. If the power is more than 1, then it is non-linear. So this one is non-linear. This is a cubic equation and it's non-linear. Now let's look at the question. It says you should find the root. You want the value of x that will satisfy this non-linear equation. And you have been given this interval. It means that your answer must lie here. If your answer is outside this interval, then it cannot be the correct answer. Now, how do you normally obtain this interval? You look at the, the problem and try to get guess the solution. Where, where would the solution fall? So we have seen that the solution will fall between one and two, but we are not specific about the, 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 the solution. We don't know the exact solution. So that's how come you have this interval. So if your answer falls outside this interval, then it means it is wrong. Now, correct to one decimal place. So at the end of the day, you have to correct your answer to one decimal place. Now, how is this done? To do this, you have to first of all construct a table. So, you construct a table this way, depending on the question, you construct a table this way. And then, the first item here is A. Now, A is the lower limit of the interval containing the roots. So, A is the lower limit of the interval containing the roots. And you find the functional value of A. And then move ahead to find B. B is the upper limit of the interval containing the root. So in this case, it is 2 for a start. And you find the functional value of B. Then move ahead to find what you call C. What is the midpoint of A and B? Because this is a bisection method. It's a bisection method. So we have A here and then B here. So you find the midpoint of them. So that would be A plus B over 2. So we call this one C. So C is A plus B over 2. And then you find the functional value of C. Okay. Now, 
They have been given this interval to start with. It means that your solution must fall within this interval. So we have one, that's A. And then we find the functional value of A. Now here, you are not interested in the actual value of A, you are interested in the sign. Is the functional value of 1, in this case, less than or less than 0 or greater than 0? So you put 1 in this function, A is the function. So the function will be L of x equal to sp plus 4 square minus 10. So when you put 1 in this function, the functional value will be less than 0. You can put 1 there, you see it. And then, B is 2. It's 2. Then you find the functional value of 2. You put 2 in this function. Okay? So, like I said, the function will be L of x is equal to s cubed plus 4 s squared minus 10. This will be a function. Now, when you put 2 there, the functional value will be greater than 0. Now we are here to find C, which is the midpoint of the, the, in, the two intervals, the two values, 1 and 2. The midpoint of the interval containing the root. So 1 plus 2 will be 3, divided by 2 will be 1.5. And then, the same way you find the, the functional value, then write the 5 first, 1.5. You find the functional value of 1.5. Then when you do that, you see that the functional value of 1.5 will be greater than 0. Now, how do you continue? You are done with the first one. How do you continue? Now look on the board. You see that the functional value of 1 gave us something less than 0. The functional value of 2 gave us something greater than 0. And the functional value of 1.5 has given us something greater than 1. Now, this is how the bisection method works. You have 1 and then 2. And then, this is 1.5. That is the midpoint. The functional value of 1 has given us something less than 0. The functional value of 2 has given us something greater than 0. And the functional value of 1.5 has given us something greater than 0. So it means that you are going to place either 1 or 2 with 1.5. So which one are you going to replace? We are going to, the functional value of 1 is less than 0. The functional value of 2 is greater than 0. So you place the one whose functional value is similar to the, the 1.5, the functional value of 1.5. So this one is less than zero. This one, the functional value is greater than zero. So 1.5, whose functional value is also greater than zero, will now come and replace two because it has greater than zero. It has greater than zero. So when you come here, it means that you told us that the answer could be obtained between one and two. Now I have realized that one and two will not give us a better uh, 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 root. To the, uh, to, the, to, to the solution. So what we do is that then now the interval should be this. The answer should be found between 1 and then 1.5. So look at it, 1 to 2. Now we have closed this to 1 to 1.5. So this is 1. This one has not been affected. And the 1.5 will come here in place 2 because this functional value is also greater than 0. So, when you put 1.5 in the, 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 the function, this one also be greater than 0. Then, then, you move ahead to find the, the midpoint of this to 1 plus 1.5. And then, you divide by 2. This one gives you 1.25. And then, you find the functional value. The functional value will give you uh, less than zero. The functional value will be less than zero. Now, we are, we are going to continue. This is less than zero. Greater than, in fact, experience has shown that the functional values of all the elements here will be less than zero. So when you get here, the f of a, you don't have to think. 
And when you get to f of b, it will be greater than zero. So the work now will be the functional value shape. Okay. Now, because this one is less than zero, the functional value of 1.25 is less than zero, it has to go and place one, whose functional value is also less than zero. So 1.25 will now come and replace one. There's no way you can replace 1.5 because the functional value of 1.5 is greater than zero. So this is less than zero, and then this has to be maintained. This is greater than zero because all the functional value same is greater than zero. All the functional value same is greater than zero. Now you find you add the two and divide by uh, 1.25 plus 1.5 and divide by two. When you do that. They are going to get 1.375, 1.375. And then again, you find the functional value of 1.375. And this is this will be greater than zero. Then you continue. Because this is greater than zero, then it has to replace the one whose functional value is greater than zero. So 1.375 will replace 1.5. So 1.25 has to be maintained. And then this one will be played by 1.375. The functional value is greater than zero. Now, to continue, you, you add these two, find the average of these two, and write at the, the, the C. So 1.25 plus 1.375 divided by 2. And when you do that, you are going to get 1.3125. 1.3125. Then again, you find the functional value of 1.3125, and this one will be less than zero. Because this is less than zero, it means that it has to replace the one whose functional value is less than zero. So in this case, if you replace 1.25, so 1.3125 will come here to replace 1.25. This is less than zero because, like I've already stated, explain has shown that the functional values here will be less than zero, and they are all less than zero, and then the functional values here will be greater than zero. This one has to be maintained. This is greater than zero. So this plus this divided by two, you find the average of these two and divide it and, and write it at the C. Now, when you find the average of these two, you are going to get 1.34. 1.34375. Then again, you find the functional value of this one, and this will be less than zero. Right, the functional value of 1.34375 to be less than zero. So because the functional value of this is less than zero, it has to come and replace the one whose functional value is less than uh, uh, zero. So it will come and replace this one. 1.34375. The functional value will, of course, be less than zero. This one has to be maintained. The functional value will be greater than zero. And then you add this and that and divide by two. When you do that, we are going to get 1.359. 1.359. One point three five nine three seven five three seven five and then again you find the functional value of this and this is will be less than this will be less than zero and because the functional value of this is less than zero it has to come and replace this one point three five nine three seven five Less than zero. One point three seven five. Greater than zero. And then again, you add the two. When you add the two and divide by two, you add this and that. When you do that and divide by two, you are getting one point three six seven. One point three six seven. One eight seven five. And the functional value of this. Is greater than zero. Now, why, why, why do we ask? Ah, when do you stop? Now, let me give you the, the stopping criteria. 
As you do it, you see, look at the question. The question said, you should correct the answer to one decimal place. And the answer should be found between A and B. So at every point in time, at every stage, you have to check the answers. For example, look at the first one here. If I want to stop here, if, I, if you correct this one to one decimal place, if you correct 1.25 to one decimal place, it should be 1.3. If you correct this one to one decimal place, it will be 1.5. They are not the same. Now, the next one. If you correct this one, 1.25 to one decimal place, it will be 1.3. Correct this one to one decimal place, it will be 1.4. They are not the same. Then you move on. So, similarly, this one decimal place will not be the same as this one to one decimal place. The same way, this to one decimal place will be 1.3, this will be 1.4. Now let's look at the, this one, the last one. If you correct this one to one decimal place, you are getting 1.4. This one to one decimal place will also give you 1.4. So it means that you have to stop. The solution has been found. You have to stop. So the solution has been found after six iterations. This, you don't count this one to one, two, three, four, five, six. So once the solution has been found, you have to stop and, and see that uh, the root, the root, the root of s cubed plus 4 s squared minus 10 equal to 0 is 1.4. Correct to 1 decimal place. And as, as, as I have already indicated, the root lies between 1.359375 and 1.375. So if you correct this one to one decimal place, you are getting 1.4. This one to one decimal place, you are getting 1.4. So you, when you stop, when you see that, when you correct, what we are getting is the A and B to one decimal place, we are getting the same answer. When you see that you are getting the same answer, then you have every right to stop. So this is basically what the bisection method is about. It's not difficult at all. Now, to get more of this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that anytime I put something there, you can get access to it and then you can download. Thank you very much for your attention.